sounding like a native while learning Japanese from anime. Is it even possible? I'm here to tell you that it is, but there are a few things that you need to look out for while learning Japanese from anime, because there are certain things that native speakers would just never use. Think of it like this, R matey. You could pretty much instantly tell that I'm impersonating a pirate. However, a native speaker would never actually say that in a regular context. The only time they, they would actually do that is if they are impersonating a pirate. It's even possible that actual pirates, actual real life pirates, never actually used that phrase, but we associate it with pirates. In anime, certain things like that take place, where they want to build on the personality of the character. They want to make it completely obvious that that is the character and that's what it's meant to be. So while learning Japanese from anime, we need to keep an eye out on these types of things. It's not a bad thing to learn. It could actually be great fun to impersonate certain characters, but you wouldn't do that while speaking to a native speaker in a day-to-day -day context. You might use it while you're hanging around with friends and you're just making a joke. So you can learn it for that context, but don't try to adapt it into your actual speech. In my time of learning Japanese from anime, I've come across six points that you should be aware of that you should avoid to adapt into your actual day-to-day -day speech. Now, for the examples that I, I give, I can't give every single different type of situation that you could find in these shows, but I give general ideas and multiple different examples to show you what you should be looking for. And that starts us off with number one. Words and phrases that native speakers wouldn't say, but appear a lot in anime. I've come across various ones of this myself, but the most obvious one was a greeting. I kept on hearing the same greeting over and over again, and I was thinking, huh, when am I ever going to actually use that? Like, why, why would I use that over the normal greeting that I've already learned. So I looked up the greeting and I found that I would be the completely opposite person who would ever actually use this phrase, which is gokigenyo. The person who would actually use this would be a high-class, pretentious woman. I'm pretty much the complete opposite of that. And even if I was high-class and pretentious, I wouldn't use it because it's generally used by women. It's a greeting by those pretentious women. I would certainly get some weird looks if I ever seriously used this as a greeting. And for the most part, even if you're a woman, you will get some weird looks if you use this. That, that is the look that you would get if you used this phrase, even if you're a woman. Now, if you want to do an impression, you can pull it off and use it, but it will be for that an impression. No one actually uses this phrase. And there's other words and phrases that you should look out for. So another word that comes to mind is switching out the word watashi for washi. Now, they both mean the same thing, meaning I or me, but washi gives a sense of the old generation. Young people will just not use it. However, in anime, there will be times where a certain character, like one example that I could think of is this young girl who is like 14 years old uses washi instead of watashi. Now, it's a, it's a weird thing, most people wouldn't use it in the day-to-day -day context, but it gives a sense of personality to this character. But if you use it in the real world, you would get that sense of the older generation. You would be looked at more like an old man. Maybe you are an old man, but you should still just probably use watashi instead of washi. So again, I can't give every single different example of where certain words wouldn't be used by a certain type of people or not by native speakers at all but be on the lookout for words that keep on showing up again and you're unsure of. Don't actually try to go out and use it, because if I ended up trying to seriously use gokigenyo in a serious conversation, 
definitely will get some weird looks. If you see words that are coming up again and again, definitely go out and look them up before you actually try to use them. You might even find out that, just like Gokigenyo, I probably would never actually have to use that. Actually, I, I won't ever have to use that. Ever. So be on the lookout for that. And that brings us into number two, which is sentence inflections. If you've ever come across an animal-like character, you've definitely heard these sentence inflections added to the end of sentences. They give the personality of the character. The one you're probably most familiar with is adding the nya at the end of a sentence. That one comes up a lot in anime, but it's not the only one that they use. Most likely, if you come across an animal-like character, they would add these inflections to the end to give the personality of the animal. Now, you'll never actually say those weird little inflections, of course, if you're imitating one of those animals, you could actually use it and get away with it. But, generally stay away from it. One show that uses them a lot is One Piece. One Piece has so many characters, it's really hard to count them all. And to distinguish all of these characters, especially the animal ones, they add these inflections at the end of the sentences. When I was first learning Japanese, I had started watching One Piece, so I, I wasn't taking in all of these random different inflections, I just thought it was the language. But the more I learned, the more I started hearing these inflections and realized that, hey, no one's actually going to say that, ever. So the more that you get used to hearing the language, the more you'll be able to recognize these inflections and know when it's not actually part of the language. Number three is the formality levels. I would say there's about five different levels of formalities that you would come across in anime only two of which you would actually use in a day-to-day -day context. So starting out with number five being the most formal, this will come into context when an employee is speaking to a customer. It's the most formal language that you could really get in the language, and is something that you would never actually have to speak unless you do become an employee and you have to speak to a customer. So number four is still a very high level of formality, and you probably won't ever have to actually speak like this, and that usually comes in when you're talking to someone who's a lot higher ranking than you. Number three is the language you would use 90% of the time. You've probably already come across it. It's the first thing that most textbooks teach. And this is used when you're speaking to people you've just met, people you work with, acquaintances, pretty much anyone that isn't a friend or a relative or someone close to you. And that brings us into number two the speech that you would use for friends, family, and people who are close to you, and people who may be younger than you. This is the first level of informal speech, but number one is a step below that, and pretty much is only used if you want to guarantee that you want to insult someone. So that level is a really raw form of language. Think of it almost like you're talking like a pirate. It's that lower educated, they grew up in poverty type of language where the majority of people are not going to speak like that, even with their friends. That very raw form of language that is just not used anywhere. So be on the lookout for those, but I would say the higher formalities, you should have an understanding of them, especially level five, because if you ever go to Japan and you go shopping, you're going to hear this level of formality. You don't have to know how to use it, but you should understand it because you probably will come across it while you're there. Number four is weird pronunciation. The best example that I could give for this is the portrayal of foreign characters. There's three different levels of foreign characters. One where it's just the most stereotypical foreign character that you could possibly meet that their pronunciation is just way off. <laughs> Level two is a foreigner who is pretty proficient in the language, but to give that personality that they're not a native speaker, they add different tonality that gives, gives a weird feeling that a native speaker wouldn't actually use. <laughs> So listening to the example, she uses yoroshiku, which is correct, but it's not 
proper pronunciation, the way that a native speaker would say it, she emphasizes too many of the letters. A native speaker would cut off some of those sounds and it would sound more like yoroshiku rather than yoroshiku. This one could be really hard to hear when you're at the beginner levels. And the more you listen to the language, the more that you'll be able to pick up the differences and where a native speaker would say one thing where these different types of like over pronunciation of letters happen. And of course, the third level of foreigners is that they're just completely fluent in the language. Those don't happen as much, but just be aware that not all foreign characters would sound weird. So that's just something to keep in mind. Number five is old characters or old sounding language. Now, as you probably know, in anime, you should not assume someone's age by the way that they look. They really like to make a character look like they're 14, but is actually 800 years old. Now, in these types of situations, they do add some sort of personality to the language that they use to make them sound older than they are. There's one example that I found that I thought was very interesting, and that's the portrayal of this fox goddess. There's two shows that actually portrayed her as a character, and they both used the same way of speaking, the same mannerisms, and I thought that was very interesting. The two portrayals are Horo from Spice and Wolf. And Senko from the helpful fox Senko. Now, obviously, one's supposed to look a lot more mature than the other, but they're the same character, and I think they were portrayed as the same age in both of the shows, being around 800 years old. So they use the same way of speaking and the same mannerisms, and I found that very interesting because it was supposed to be portraying the same character. I don't know, it's just something that I really appreciate. It just makes sense and it fits. But anyway, those are definitely things that you should look out for, like the older characters. You don't want to sound, start sounding like an old person. <laughs> Unless you are an old person, then maybe that's a perfect fit for you. But these two characters you probably wouldn't even use because it's supposed to sound more like an ancient way of speaking. Like, no one from 800 years ago speaks the same way they do today. It's kind of like if you try to start speaking like Shakespeare, it's not going to come out the same way. Not even the older people who live today speak like they came from a Shakespearean time period. Just be on the lookout for that kind of usage. And number six is different dialects. Now this one's a little different than all of the other ones because native speakers actually use it, but it's not the standard. The main dialect that you will be hearing is the Kansai dialect, and you will come across this in various different anime, but you probably don't want to learn it as it isn't the standard. For the most part, people will just wonder why you chose to learn the Kansai dialect over the standard Japanese. Because it's, it's one of those things where, unless you were a native from there, there's just no reason to actually learn it. And it's almost thought of as more of an improper form of the language, even though there's nothing wrong. So think of it like this. The way I'm speaking right now, it's kind of the standard American English. However, if you go down south, you'll start hearing that southern dialect. It pretty much is its own dialect, because they have a lot of weird mannerisms that I just cannot understand at all, but they have their own accent and everything. It's almost thought of as a less intelligent form of the language. That doesn't mean anything personally, just it's, it's the way that people portray it. It's like how people portray English speakers, like from England, as an upper class, a more formal way of speaking, more pretentious, more wise, smarter, and type that type of stuff. It's the same concept. Again, there's nothing wrong with it. The way people speak speaks nothing to their own intelligence. It's just that portrayal that is given off. So while watching anime, you'll hear a lot of people who speak the Kansai dialect, 
but you probably shouldn't be trying to adapt that way of speaking into your actual day-to-day -day speech. If you want to pinpoint which characters are speaking a Kansai dialect, then there are three things that are pretty much a surefire way to point them out. The first one is switching the word nai for hen. First, listen to the example that I picked out. So as you can see, they're saying the exact same thing, except they're switching out that one word. So instead of kaiwa suzuke nai na, it's kaiwa suzuke hen na. Number two is switching out the word e, meaning good, for e, meaning the exact same thing, it's just switched out. And number three is one that I can't completely figure out every single example where they would use it. One of the most prominent examples I could think of is switching out Jan, which is the shortened form of Janai. So you could say E Janai, meaning isn't it good, where a person speaking the Kansai dialect would use Ya. So it would be E Ya. So don't take my pronunciation to be exact, but I did find one example that just runs through all of these. So that's it. Those are the six things that I found that you should look out for while learning Japanese from anime. Now, I do feel like there are some that I couldn't think of. I tried thinking of more. I felt like there were more. So if you find anything that I didn't add on this list, please do comment below and let me know if there's anything else that I should add to the list. And also let me know how this list will help you in learning Japanese from anime. And if you like the video, please do subscribe and click the bell so you can get notified when part two of this mini series comes out. And in that video, I will be going through how to actually pick the anime that you would learn from. Because going through all of this list, there are some shows that do it better than others. And for example, One Piece is probably not the best show that you could be picking to start learning Japanese and actually pick it apart to use in a day-to-day -day context. So in that next video, I will go through how to pick shows that are actually good while following all of these points that I have already gone through. So with all of that said, please do subscribe, click the bell, and we can get right into that video.